Have you ever wondered which programming language you should learn or start with? Well, this is not the right answer to approach a programming language, but this might definitely help. So someone on Reddit actually compiled down 4 million jobs online and figured out what was the average salary for each job based on the programming language they had. And the results are very interesting. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what's happening in the world of development with programming languages today. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Now, one important thing to remember is that these salaries are actually average salaries. That means there are a ton of data points. There might be a ton of data points which are a lot below the average and a ton of data points which are above the average as well. And a few, I mean, spread it around as well. So. It's not like you would get a job in that programming language only on that salary. That's like a very probable or a very expected range around which you can get a job. Let's start with the number 10 job in the list. And the number 10 programming language is Python. So Python again is a very versatile, very popular, very used programming language because this is something which I believe almost every programmer knows about at least the name, if not the language itself, because Python is a very general purpose programming language, right? You can build automated scripts, you can build backend servers, you can build MLAS stuff, you can do a lot of data science with Python. So it's priced at somewhere around $99,000 per year as an average salary and it goes up to i mean some offers goes also up to five hundred thousand dollars per year like i said this is like a sort of an average and we'll only talk about averages in this video because that's that's one way to keep the discussion around a single metric but again like i said averages does not mean that this is something you will get it's just a data point over mm -hmm. here now one more thing to remember is that this scraping and the survey which was done was done on a lot of United States jobs, which means that this data is obviously skewed a lot towards that particular thing. But you have to remember that a lot of jobs even in US are remote. So if you are someone who is trying to break into the industry, a lot of these jobs which pay this much amount over here are actually also for you, right? So it's not like these are only for US people. A bunch of these jobs are also remote. So this data is relevant pretty much for anyone who's anywhere in the world. Number nine is JavaScript, obviously the programming language language we all every single person on the world loves and cares about obviously so this is this goes somewhere around 102k which is 102,000 US dollars per year and this is all RN per year if nothing I think JavaScript is one of the most important things you can teach yourself these days because of the places this language is present at it's present on the mobile infrastructure it's present on web it's present on backend it's even present on IOT in some cases where lightweight JS engines can be embedded so it's 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 a no-brainer if you want to get a high paying job today and you want to work into these web developments or mobile development fields I think JavaScript is something you should really consider number eight we have is Swift and Swift again is developed by Apple and it's used on a lot of Apple products so it makes sense that this is more like suited for a high paying job as well because you know you'll be developing applications which will be used by Apple users and Apple users have a little bit more purchasing power compared to Android users so Swift is another high paying job which is available but this is primarily based for Apple infrastructure and Apple ecosystem itself so if you want to get into the iPhone development part or Mac OS or these sort of things, then Swift makes a lot of sense. Number seven programming language we have is Ruby. Now Ruby is something which I have not really personally worked a lot with, but I've heard a lot of good things about Ruby. It starts at around 114,000 USD as salary, the average salary. And this is like combined with the Rails, for example, one of the things which I have heard a lot from the founders of Remix, the new React framework, is that a lot of their concepts and a lot of good practices are based on Ruby and Rails, right? So I'm assuming that Ruby is a great language, a great, you know, underlying programming language, even for a framework like Rails. And given the fact that it is like, can be used as a general purpose programming language for building and scripting stuff, just like Python, I believe this could also be a good choice if you're trying to get into backend programming right because ruby would definitely help you being a good developer as a in the in the backend field already number six is typescript the javascript actually bags another place in the list that is number nine and number six so these are kind of the same things in a lot of ways typescript is obviously a super set of javascript so it's a little bit more in terms of syntax and understandings and generics and stuff you need to understand but at the end of the day you are writing javascript right any valid javascript is valid TypeScript also if you just modify and tweak the configuration. So TypeScript, 
I have been saying it for years is super important, not only as a programming language, which will help you earn more, but also as a programming language, which will keep you sane in bigger code bases, where you would not make a lot of mistakes on runtime if you don't lie to TypeScript. As long as you don't lie to the TypeScript type system, you know, casting with any or unknown and stuff like this, TypeScript will also take care of you. Number five, we have Golang. Now Go is again a very popular choice these days among a lot of systems which require speed as well as ease of development. Again, I don't have a lot of personal experience with Golang, but I do feel like this is also becoming one of the, those languages which are, you know, very common and you will see these used in a lot of places where performance is the need of the hour. So it tries to bring a lot of benefits of, you know, performance like C and C++ at the same time bringing benefits of memory management and garbage collection and stuff like that, which makes it a really interesting choice. But yeah, I mean, again, if you're getting to backend, then it's a, it's a good language to learn because, you know, tools like, for example, ES build is also built in Golang. And I mean, it's, it's a great choice. Number four is Haskell. Now Haskell is a programming language I know very little about, but as the website says, it's a fully purely functional programming language used in a lot of systems. So I, I won't get into a lot of these details because trust me, I don't know a lot about, I've not really worked with Haskell before, but apparently it says that it's a programming language which is well paid, so it might be, but I won't probably suggest it if you're learning a new language from start and you don't have to learn Haskell because there are a lot of good options above that, even though they are a little bit less paid and there will be a lot of good options below this as well. So just on the list. Number three is Scala. Now Scala is a programming language which goes up to 120k and all the way offers are going up to 400k per year as well. But Scala is a programming language that combines the object oriented part and the functional programming part and it can also run on JVM that is Java and it can also run in JavaScript that is you know inside your browsers using something known as Scala.js. So you know it comes with a strong build system, a strong type system, type support and writing code just like you would write in TypeScript in a way. But but at least the landing page of Scala seems more impressive in terms of the features it offers, the strong type system and compilation part and so on to JavaScript. So I believe that's that's where Scala actually shines for high performance systems. But you can write it in JVM, you can compile it directly into LLVM, you can write it in JS and you get paid a lot for this. All right, number two. Number two is Rustland and Rust goes again up to 122, 123k USD. And uh, I mean, for Rust again, I feel like this is something which has got a lot of hype, a lot of attention for good. And it deserves all the attention and deserves all the hype because it has been running SWC, for example. It has been running a bunch of great toolings on the web, which are fast, which are memory safe, which are awesome. And uh, Rust is in a lot of bases of you can say it's a good bet as a programming language because it has been building a vibrant community. It has been fixing a lot of things which were wrong with C, C++ in terms of general practices you would take as a developer, memory management and unsafe memory and so on. So Rust again, even considering Wasm, for example, a lot of code for WebAssembly would be written in Rust eventually. So Rust again is a good choice to pick as a backend programming language if you want to start programming in today's time. And then finally, the language of the hour is number one, which is Solidity and Solidity is a programming language for Web3. Now Web3 is a very interesting thing which I have my eyes on and I've been studying and I've been reading and I've been pondering about Web3 myself. So it's a programming language built to run smart contracts on these decentralized nodes and uh, you get up to 160,000. I mean, that's the average and you can clearly see the jump in the average between number two and number one. That means Solidity is much, much, much more in demand in terms of the salary they are being offered. And some of the salaries also go even up to $1 million per year, which is like a crazy amount of salary for a developer, right? So this is something which is super, super, super popular and in demand right now. If you want to get into Web3, if you want to become a developer, this is the thing you have to learn. A good thing about Solidity is that we are already at Codam. We are working on Web3 learning path. If you have not checked out Web3 learning path, check it out. The second course on Solidity, the smart contract testing is coming out this week. We'll be rolling it out. The first course on Solidity, Ethereum, EVMs, ERC20 tokens is already there. I mean, it's it's it costs you $20 probably and you get a salary of 160k average or 1 million USD, which is like crazy ROI. 
even if I divide it in a way 160k and let's say you spent $20 pro membership for let's say even 10 months so a k is a thousand so you get a 800 times return on your investment which is crazy right so yeah i mean this is the list this is what's happening in the world in today's time in 2022 and if you are looking to get into a programming language although this should not really impact a lot of things because you can see over here in this space at least till number two it's less than 10,000, 20,000 us dollars of you know work 10 to 2. So it's it's possible that you are a very good JavaScript developer, but not a very good Golang developer, but you still land a JavaScript job which pays you much more than Golang. Why? Because these are average salaries. Please remember that. But in case of Solidity, for example, just as an example, the average itself is way too high. That means you have even more potential to go forward. So that is all for this video. I hope this was an informational video. Make sure you leave a like and comment down what do you think, what your salary is, if you're comfortable in sharing that. That is all for this video. Make sure you check out the web learning path on CodeDAM. I'm gonna see you in the next one really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDAM's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.